So right now at the college where I teach, I'm teaching a course in elementary number theory. And at the moment, we're covering quadratic residues and quadratic reciprocity. And as such, I've written some examples for my class, and I like this example so much that I thought I'd make a video of it. So our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that 4 to the n plus 24 to the n plus 2,181 to the n is a perfect square. So the background idea that we're going to use to solve this is the fact that working modulo n, only certain numbers are perfect squares. So let's look at some examples of that real quick before we dive into the solution of this. So if we're working mod 4, the only perfect squares are 0 and 1. And we can see that because 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, but that's 0, 3 squared is 9, but that's 1 mod 4. And you really only need to consider the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 squared. Notice I haven't written 0 squared because that's obviously 0. So just to reiterate, the only perfect squares mod 4 are 0 and 1. Similarly, we can work mod 5. So notice 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 4 again because it's equal to 9, which is congruent to 4 mod 5. And then 4 squared is 16, which is 1 mod 5. That means that 0, 1, and 4 are the only perfect squares mod 5. Then, working mod 7, we can do the same type of calculation. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, but 9 is 2 mod 7. And then these last three cases, you really don't really have to work out because 4 is negative 3. So when you square it, you should get the same thing, and you do. And similarly for 5 and 6. So that tells us that the perfect squares mod 7 are 0, 1, 2, and 4. Okay, so now that we've got this idea kind of recalled in our minds, let's jump into the solution of this problem. So we're going to start by looking at this and trying to figure out what we should reduce this mod first. Well, the kind of obvious thing is to reduce mod 4 because 4 is a multiple of 4 and 24 is also a multiple of 4. So let's do that. So we've got 4 to the n plus 24 to the n plus 2,181 to the n. That's going to be congruent to 0 to the n plus 0 to the n plus 1 to the n, which is just 1 mod 4. But 1 is a perfect square, so that actually doesn't help very much. Maybe we'll write that here. This is no help towards our solution. So we'd like to look back over here and get another idea for reduction. We'll notice that 24 is always a multiple of 8. Also, 4 to the n is a multiple of 8 if n is bigger than or equal to 2. So maybe we could reduce mod 8 for all of the cases when n is bigger than or equal to 2, and then we can check the n equals 1 case on its own. So let's do just that. So let's suppose that n is bigger than or equal to 2 and we have a solution. So we have m squared is equal to 4 to the n plus 24 to the n plus 2181 to the n. Now we'll reduce mod 8. So let's do that. So mod 8, that will tell us that m squared is congruent to, well, that'll be 0 to the n. That'll also be 0 to the n. Because notice if n is bigger than or equal to 2, then we've got at least a factor of 16 in this 4 to the n. So that's going to be 0 mod 8. And what we're left with is 2,181 to the n mod 8, but that's going to be the same thing as 5 to the n mod 8. Well, that's just one part of what we need to work with. We also need the perfect squares mod 8. So let's figure those out. So we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 squared. So 1 squared is obviously equal to 1, 2 squared is equal to 4, 3 squared is equal to 9, which is 1, 4 squared is equal to 16, which is 0, 
5 squared is equal to 25, which is 1. 6 squared is equal to 36, which is 0. And 7 squared is equal to 49, which is 1. So looking at this, we see that the only perfect squares are 1 and 4 and 0. But the only odd perfect squares are 1 mod 8. So what does that tell us? That tells us that 5 to the n is congruent to 1 mod 8. That's because it's a perfect square. But by what we've seen here, that only occurs when we have an even exponent. Anytime we have an odd exponent, we'll get 5. So that means that n is even. Okay, but that means we can write n as 2 times a for some natural number a. Okay, great. But now let's throw that back into our original setup and work from there. So now we have m squared, because that's this, is equal to 16 to the a. That's what we get here plus 24 squared to the a. I won't bother figuring out what 24 squared is, but if we need to, we'll do that when we get to it. And then plus 2181 squared to the a. Now we'd like to reduce this mod something and hopefully mod something so that this reduces very, very simply to something that is not a perfect square. So maybe we'll try to find the best type of reduction. And that type of reduction would occur when each of these turns into one. But notice each of those will turn into one if we reduce mod five. Reducing mod five makes 16 one. 24 is negative 1, but we have to square it, which is positive 1. And then this 2181 is 1 mod 5. So again, reducing mod 5, we'll get that this is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3 mod 5. But as we saw on the previous board, 3 is not a perfect square. So that means we've got a contradiction because we have m squared is congruent to 3 mod 5, but as we saw, there are no perfect squares congruent to 3 mod 5. But what did we contradict? We contradict the simultaneous condition of n being bigger than or equal to 2 and having a solution like this. So that means these two things together are impossible. Well, if n is not allowed to be bigger than or equal to 2, then that means it has to be strictly less than 2. In other words, it's equal to 1. So let's maybe clean up the board and we'll check that case to see if we indeed get a perfect square. So far, we've shown that this object right here is never a perfect square when n is bigger than or equal to 2. That means, that means n equals 1 is the only possibility for this to be a perfect square. Let's check if it is a perfect square. So n equals 1 into this gives us 4 plus 24 plus 2181. Well, I'll let you guys add that up. What you get is 2209, which indeed is a perfect square. It is 47 squared. So that tells us that this n equals 1 is indeed our only solution. Now before we end the video, maybe take some motivation from what we saw in this solution process to see if you can come up with your own problem like this. And that's a good place to stop.